I do not want to die, but I am dying, and I want to die on my own terms. According to Compassion and Choices, these were the words spoken by Brittany Maynard shortly before she died. Brittany Maynard was a terminally ill 29-year-old woman who fought for medical aid and dying legislation in California after moving to Oregon to access the option. My name is Amy Judy and I have seen firsthand the last days and hours of a terminally ill patient. I watched my sister, who was diagnosed with stage 4 breast cancer, suffer with endless pain the last two weeks of her life before she passed away. Everyone has known someone with a terminal illness or knows someone who knows somebody with a terminal illness. Today I'm going to tell you what death with dignity means, where it's authorized, why it should be legal throughout the United States, and what you can do to help. According to the Death with Dignity National Center, death with dignity is an end-of-life option for mentally competent, terminally ill patients with six months or less to live. It enables the patient to use medical practice to aid in dying. The patient requests and receives a prescription from a physician for medication that can be self-ingested to end the dying process. Death with dignity allows the patient to make their own end-of-life decisions. Death with dignity is a right that should be protected for all terminally ill patients. However, there is a limited number of states that authorize death with dignity. According to Population, World Population Review, death with dignity is authorized only in eight states and the District of Columbia. Looking at this timeline, you can see that Oregon was the first to pass the Death with Dignity Act between 1994 and 1997. It was more than 10 years later in 2008 when Washington passed its Death with Dignity Act. Vermont followed five years later with their Patient Choice and Control at the End of Life Act. California passed its End of Life Option Act in 2015. Both Colorado and the District of Columbia passed Death with Dignity Acts in 2016. And most recently, in 2019, Hawaii, Maine, and New Jersey all passed acts reserving the rights of those who are terminally ill to die with dignity. According to the Oregon Death with Dignity Act annual report, since the first Oregonian took medication under the law in 1998, a total of 2,518 people received prescriptions under the act, of whom 66% have died ingesting the medications. This is a graph showing a comparison between the number of prescriptions that are written, as you can see in green, versus the Death with Dignity Act deaths. As you can see, as since uh, it began in 1998, Till most recently in 2019, the amount of people asking for prescriptions and using those prescriptions has steadily increased. Physician-assisted dying is a controversial topic in the United States. Terminally ill patients in the states I've just mentioned have their death with dignity rights protected, but what about those who are terminally ill living in another state? In the 2018 article, 12 Myths About Physician-Assisted Suicide and Medical Aid in Dying, written by Hansen and Pies, it is said that terminally ill patients should make their own end-of-life decisions and determine how much pain and suffering they should endure. Without the government and its interference, politicians and their ideology, or religious leaders and their dogmas. Now, not just anyone can get access for medications to end their life. It is a rigorous process to proceed with physician-assisted dying. Two physicians must confirm the patient's residency, diagnosis, prognosis, mental competence, and if the request is being made voluntarily. Two waiting periods, the first between oral request and the second between receiving and filling prescriptions are also required. Death with dignity is necessary because the process of dying in the United States has become impersonal with little communication between physician and the patient. According to Pies and Hansen, the most common reasons for requesting medical aid in dying were loss of autonomy, the inability to engage in enjoyable activities, and loss of dignity. As you can see, death with dignity is not just a way for anyone to take their own life. Death with dignity gives control back to a terminally ill person whose ability to control their life was taken once their body began to fail. Death with Dignity is an end-of-life option for mentally competent, terminally ill patients with a prognosis of six months or less to live. There are a limited number of states in the United States that have Death with Dignity laws. Death with Dignity gives autonomy back to terminally ill patients. Death with Dignity is a right that should be protected for all Americans. 
So today, I implore you to do your part in advocating for the rights of the terminally ill. Contact our congressmen and women and express to them it is time to change the laws. Let's start right here in North Carolina.